，这是与海边的吴瑞部族共同度过的最后一个夜晚。过去的三天是中国探险队员进入澳大利亚北领地后最轻松的时光，也是他们真正与古老的澳洲原住民亲密接触的时刻。Because it's easy and to, uh, to, to, to cook, to, to cook, yeah, to be cooking. Fun bean mein. Fun bean mein. Oh, nice, again. Fun bean mein. Fun bean mein. Fun. Fun. Fun bean mein. Fun bean mein. 结束了阿纳姆丛林中的梦魇，现在看看公正的大自然对勇敢者的恩赐。沙滩填平了沼泽泥塘，海浪声淹没了猛兽的嘶嚎。所有的恐慌、疲惫和征伐之心，都在咸涩微湿的海风中一扫而光。在五瑞部落的营地，生命变得宁静安详。这是阿纳姆地的临海一侧，澳大利亚北海岸线的中间位置，北临阿拉夫拉海，东至卡本塔利亚湾。一些原住民几万年来过着逐海而居的生活，漫长的海岸线被划分为若干领地，由不同的原住民部落各自拥有。名为武瑞的部落是这片海域的领主。Uncle R G 是部落首领，但地权的实际所有者是他的侄女 Maria 所率领的庞大家族。My name is Maria Stephen, and this is our family outstation. It's called Woodigi. What happens is, um, uh. For a lot of people, like they, they they ask me, who am I? And I would say that I'm. Um, my name is Maria Stevens, and I'm Mura. My country is Mura, and what we actually are is very country specific. So most people would say, but you're an Australian, um, but Australia is not my country. 部落是原住民历史延续至今的重要保证。但对于外来人，这是一个完全封闭、神秘莫测的体系。Within the Aboriginal culture, we only can talk specifically. So, really, I can't talk about the other cultures or the other families, or you're not allowed to talk in general for Aboriginal people. So, you can only talk about your own feelings and about your own place where you are. 庆幸的是，猎手艾德姆那位漂亮的土著太太，正是 Maria 家族的成员。因为她的关系，中国队员获准进入到五瑞部落所拥有的海滨。几万年来，这里一直是生人的禁地。在海边居住经验的人们来说，他们会遇到一些考虑不到的麻烦。随队医生杰瑞就是专门负责解决麻烦的人。Probably the most important thing in the tropics is dehydration. Why you lose a lot of fluid, or why you need to drink a lot of fluid, because in fact you can lose anything up to two to three liters of fluid through the lungs and through the sweat. In an afternoon of physical activity, 医生会密切关注每一个中国队员的身体状况。老瑞尔夫的大篷车队会为他们准备营养丰富的一日三餐，但这并不意味着中国队员们可以彻底休息了。他们还没有完成此行的最终目的。近在咫尺的马瑞尔家族也许会给出他们某些答案。
原住民各部落使用不同的语言，当他们要把信息传达给外人时，通常会把信息以图画的方式留在树木上，他们把那称为信息棍。The message stick usually tells people, you know, like it, it's um, like sending a fax or a telephone to let people know that you're coming or an email. Um, a message stick is very similar and it has a message on of why you're coming to country and what you're coming to country for and who you are. Many of the Chinese soldiers are the first to meet the Chinese family. 他们还不太确定该如何把握这个来之不易的机会，只有一个人是例外。梁子这个人呢，给人的一个感觉呢，就是说，第一印象就是很爽朗，很明快；另外一个呢，他有一定的英语能力。呃，还有一个最重要的一点呢，他已经走遍非洲。呃，他应该知道怎么去尊重别人的文化。从他的文字、从他的摄像、影像、图片来看，他很懂得怎么去尊重别人。他是能够把自己和这个当地的人民融入一片。他不用一个文明的价值去评判另外一个人，这个是我觉得最好的。梁子，中国户外探险领域中带有传奇色彩的女性，早年是一名战地女记者，退伍后周游世界。他曾经多次只身进入非洲土著部落，其经历通过电视、照片或文字出版物的形式被大众广为熟悉。我跟就非洲人打交道的时候，我有一个最明显的特点，就是说我问完了人的名字之后，我立即要把他记住，然后接下来的时候就会直接呼他称呼他的名字，而不是 “hello”、“呃”“哎”什么这样的。看来。我们的女探险家的确有独特的处事技巧，那么，五瑞部落会不会成为她下一部作品中的主角呢？毕竟不是每个人都有机会见证人类最古老的生存方式。尽管这机会只有七十二个小时，她该先从哪里开始？这看上去是个很庞杂的大家庭，甚至家庭成员拥有不同的肤色。想弄清楚这一点的确有些困难。一个肤浅的解释是：十八世纪晚夜，殖民者来到未知南大陆，他们以超越前人的忍耐力开始在这里定居。随之产生的一个影响就是，原住民部落内部严格恪守的婚姻制度发生了微妙变化。这就是为什么在今天的某些澳洲土著部落中会有肤色不同的成员。玛瑞亚家族就是这样的例子，他的母亲是原住民，父亲是西班牙人。玛瑞亚的哥哥在四岁时夭折，作为家族的第五代长女，她选择了继承母亲原住民的血统，因此她从小就要接受成为家族代言人的培养。他认的是母亲的这条，就是原住民的这条线。那这样的话呢，就是说，在他就给我详细画了一个图表，就是呃一代一代一代到他是第五代，然后第六代有二十多个人，到第七代现在是第七代的，也就是说他的孙子辈的这一代有五十一个人，就是家族越来越扩大。当人们来到海滨时，总是很难抵抗大海的诱惑。更不会错过在海面上风驰电掣的快感
They are Z. Yeah, call, me, call me Z, you know. Z. Okay. Yes. Jess, uh, Kenny, Jess. Kenny, Jess. Kenny, Jess. Kenny, Jess. Okay. Today, Jess will go with Kenny and his brother to the sea. Captain Carr is the captain. The engine is from Darwin, and he brought it along. In the usual situation, the native people only use Mu. Hawhan海中散落着无数岛屿,你无法确定在上面是否有人类登陆的足迹。去小岛之前的时候，想象的肯定是那些有一些原住民在那是生存啊，然后呢就想的是，哎，去了解一下他们是怎么样的生存的，怎么谋生的哈。因为孤一个一个孤岛嘛，就是一个一个孤岛那样的哈。然后到了那个岛上以后哈，没人，什么都没有。然后呢，我一问他，我我说人呢？他说的这就没人。我说这里没人是干什么的？他说实际上这地方是一个度假的，就是。呃，度假的一个岛，呃，说度假，其实上面什么都没有，是他们原住民度假的。So do you know, do you know first person, long time ago I think first person come here, you know? It was about two hundred years ago. Two hundred years ago. Yeah, Macassans. So which one, you know? Macassans. 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 Well, Macassans, I'm not sure where they come where from. Where he's from? Indonesia. Indonesia, yeah. Indonesia. Uh, is it, is it Chinese or traders? They like traders. Oh. 人类天性擅长探索未知领域，但不是所有岛屿都适合生命居住。大多数岛屿的地下水源隐藏太深，原住民无力开采，这里只能是他们暂时的度假场所。Never people living here long long time. For example, for uh, you know, half year, one year. But what the native people used to do, the Aboriginal, is um, wet season when too much mosquito, mm. they used to come and stay out here. Mm. Because there's no, no mosquitoes. Oh. Yeah. They bring their water, they bring their food. But mainly they eat fish and there's some oysters, uh, shell meat, they like uh, mussels, mussels, pippies, pippy shells, they like cockle shells. Mm. Mm. Yeah. The half half year, you know, is the no, thing. No. Maybe how many months? Short Maybe time, short time. They might come for a couple, one or two months, but one, they, two months. they come back with some fords. Hmm. They go back at water if they couldn't find. I must have knew where the water was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes they go back to their house for a few days. Yeah. If there's no mosquitoes, they stay there for a while. Mosquitoes back back over here. 想了解岛上的那些居民生活的状况，这个这个理想破灭了。嗯，但是呢，岛上呢有好多那个就是海产品的东西。嗯，特别是我我看到一个呃小的那个，呃、当然是当然有什么各种有一些蛋呐、啊，或者是还有一些死去的一些东西。还有一个看到了一个一呃就是活了一天的小海龟。就是眼睛还带红肉呢。后来我说，哎，这个还挺新鲜，但是已经死了，是个壳。然后说是，这个这个龟也就是一天，就是这样的话就挺刚死了，就反正看这些东西都挺新鲜的，以前没见过。虽然在海边上，原来我也也住过，就是在非洲的时候，在红海边上，但是跟它这个环境是不一样的，所以嗯，感觉的挺，反正感觉挺挺挺爽的。事实上。五瑞部落正是居住在汪洋大海中的某座岛屿上，他们一年中只有七八两月才会来到海边的营地。
，然后开始充满期待的狩猎季节。通常只是部分成年人带领着孩子前来，这些孩子要在这里完成独特的生存教育。He also, when we're sitting around the fire, he will tell us um, um, when you look at this fire, if it's one colour, that means you're going to have a lot of mosquitoes, and then if it's another colour, you you only have a little bit or no mosquitoes. Yeah, um, animals will tell you stories as well, like um, when when we're driving out, so we learn to talk with animals and listen to the animals as well. But it's observation. We learn a lot through observation and hands-on. Yeah. 原住民伟大的百科全书就是靠代代相传得以延续，并且书的内容由年轻一代不断更新。每一个原住民的孩子从小就要学会从大自然里得到他们需要的一切。Yeah, them all the Aboriginal kids they really love to take the hunting, go fishing, eating fish, crab, mussel, oysters, everything. 原住民有自己的食谱，在他们五万年的历史上找不到任何农耕文明的痕迹。他们至今获取食物的主要方式。原住民的渔猎至少有四种以上的方法，使用鱼叉是最普遍的方式。他们会把沿途捉到的猎物埋在附近的沙滩里，狩猎结束返回时再一路收获。他们抓到了一个大家伙，但显然他并不好对付。现在，让我们来看看这究竟是什么。这个看上去像蝙蝠一样的家伙，学名红鱼，和你在电视里或者海洋馆的陈列窗后面看到的那条一模一样，对不对？嗯、当一条真正的红鱼和你近在咫尺时，你一定要小心。
，他可是危险的海洋杀手，在他细长的尾部隐藏着一根致命的毒刺，如果被遮中，十分钟之内便会令人丧命。二零零六年，著名的澳大利亚鳄鱼猎手史蒂夫·欧文就是死于红鱼的攻击。但是对于原住民来说，它只是长着刺的食物。部落里的每一个人都要参加劳动。且有明确的分工。当男人们捕鱼时，妇女则带着更小一点的孩子们从事采集工作。原住民的主要食物是坚果、植物的块茎或者野生苹果。他们根据不同的季节采集不同的食物。只不过，他们把一年划分为八个季节。八个季节。八个季节。哦，对，所以那这八个季节怎么分的？你知道吗？怎么会八个季节呢？ Like um, different animal sounds, different flowers, different plums, um, and a lot of people talk about the wet season and the dry season. But for us, our seasons relate to our food sources, and so we know at different times, like for the green plums, um, then you have um, different flowers. Um, and your crabs and all the different things tell you when the new seasons are in. So there's, there's, I think there's eight altogether, and when we go back to camp, I'll get all the names for them. Because it's got all the spellings out as well. Okay. 原住民的采集时间表完全由大自然决定，他们接受来自土地和海洋的双重恩赐。海水落潮时，会把营养丰富的贝类生物留在河滩，这是最佳的采集时刻。现在。采集队伍要渡过这条小河，到对面寻找食物。这对于原住民来说是一次快乐的旅行，但对于我们这些已经见识过危险丛林的勇士们来说，似乎有一点小麻烦。来自现代社会的物质财富，在这里却有可能成为你的负担。至少你要担心装在裤子口袋里的那些小东西不要被水弄湿。无论如何，要抓紧时间了。当海水再次涨潮时，藏在泥沼中的食物可能会逃走。这会是一堂丰富的野外授课，每一个中国队员从这里学到的东西不会比在阿纳姆的丛林中少，甚至会更多。我看这片地上啊，什么都没有，就是一点感觉都没有。但是呢，他就跟我讲，他说的那个这里就有一个大的什么的，拿棍子一指，哎，我一看这地方好像没什么东西，他啪，真是挖出来一个大的。他们真的就是特别有那种采摘啊、采集啊这样的生活经验。你像那个，我觉得这些东西都是你那个他在生活中逐渐一点点的就积累的这些经验、生存经验嘛。你像我们把我们放在一个那个林子里，就告诉你那里有什么东西，你也未必能找得着。We go down on the beach, we find plenty pipis, and every time he come down, he can't find them. So he always say, "Well, where you find them?" And we say, "On the beach." And he say, "But I look there, but there's kalu." So we, that's not, yeah, that's how our country protects itself, yeah. Kalu means nothing, yeah. Have you ever asked yourself, if you can live in this forest, how long will you live? You have to admit that every Indian is a natural citizen of the land. And they can live very well. Here we go. Here we go.
as you can see, like when you get into this sort of country, it's a little bit of work to get in here. It's a little bit of effort. Yeah, look, there's plenty of tucker. Oh. See that? Very salty, beautiful. It's fresh. Mmm. Namak. Taste? You want to taste it? And salt? Yeah, good. Let me pay it. This is all salt water country. Yeah. Oh, you can eat it. I'll, I'll get him ready. You eat him. It's salt. When you cook them in the fire, they just pop open really easy. They're a little bit, because it's a live animal, it's sort of, you've got to be a little bit tougher with them. Use a bigger knife for leverage. So that's the muscle there. Just always have a look for a pearl. Could you give your girlfriend a present? No pearl. For you. You. For drink? No. Yeah, you eat that. It tastes, it tastes. You, you eat him. This one. You gotta eat that. Tell her eat the flesh. Yeah, eat, eat the flesh. It's fresh? Yeah, fresh. Flesh, yeah. Eat it. Oh, very good. Lisa, tell her very good. Very strong, make it strong. 巨咸，特别咸，但是呢，特别新鲜。真的很好吃、啊，吃完一个还不过瘾，还想吃第二个，就那种感觉。所以他们的生活为什么挺健康的哈？他就跟他在大自然中吃这些食物有关系的，不像我们谨小慎微的，什么东西洗没洗呀、啊，又什么什么考虑那么多，人家没有这些东西。而且他是当地这个地方也没有什么污染，所以他的，我觉得他的那种生存的状况是，是非常棒的。原住民从远古时代就与大自然签有契约，即便是再富饶的土地，他们也只是从中采集微量的生活所需。纵观原住民的历史，找不到有关剩余产品或者财富积累的迹象，没有剩余价值的概念，也就没有过多的贪欲和索取，这是人类社会最质朴的生活态度。显然，这种快乐的态度极富感染力。无论是谁收获的食物，带回部落里都要平均分配，这很像社会公有制的一种理想再现。通常由部落或者家族的长老行使分配权利，他们也负责食物的烹制，就像这条刚刚捕到的红鱼。安可阿吉会把它变成可口美味。在原住民的进化历史上，火的出现至关重要，其中某些使用方法似乎与古老中国惊人相似。Fire is a way of letting people know that you're there. Like if you light, we call it kujali. So if you light a fire and then you put and that's just the fire, and you can tell people where you are. Um, and when you want someone to come and pick you up or to, to um, collect you, they put leaves on, so that sends up a smoke signal to, to tell people to, you know, to, that you need help. So that's another way of communication. And pictorially as well, through our paintings, we communicate with each other. 原住民的先祖在使用火的方面已经具有较高水平，这也来源于他们从生存开始就只吃熟食，但烹制方法延续至今也极其简单，火烤或者水煮。Yeah. 现在多找些木柴，准备把篝火燃得更旺一些。再过几个小时，当太阳从海平面消失的时候，五瑞部落将为来自中国的客人展现原住民最独特的魅力
Bukair, ayo mal kau jumpa luar ngaruh lo. Pada mana pada mana mal ngaruh di mana kau awal dan lu kaya nara, pada ngaruh dengan lu guna. Kau lu kau lu kaya mana? These people came here today, enjoying like seeing what Aboriginal life about and having good time. And yeah, that's all. Today, show show them our cultures and sharing our cultures as well. 来自这么遥远地方的客人，来分享我们的文化以及分享我们的经验。Yeah, bawa bawa bawa, bawa dua. Bawa 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 bawa. Bawa amar kuai, angkai angkai bawa amar kuai gir, guru legir, angkai amin guru legir kuku nak. Bawa iya ni dah, bawa dua dua, bawa bawa bawa, bawa mang bawa ini, bawa pulang kan ibu mang bawa bayan bawa bawa bayan kuku nak. Bawa iya ni dah bawa dua dua. Balon, 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 mau kuna kalau berjalan harum ayam mau berulir kuna kuwa. Australia jalan, harum ayam. Berdaya berjari, berjari dan harum berang harum harum mana? This is the most important part of the Chinese Civil War with the Uruk Bulo members of the Uruk Bulo Group. In the past two weeks, far away from the Chinese people, they have experienced the most ancient life of human society. The end of the war is necessary to be able to sing and sing. All the women and women must be able to raise their hands, and they must be able to use the animals and the animals to use the animals to use the animals. 在原住民的传承里，这暗含某种向祖先致敬的意义。女性舞者要换上仪式装束，当男性舞者起舞时，他们要做的就是伴随节拍轻轻摇曳身体。最后那个。快跳完的时候，他们会说那个 V V V， 就是像那个，然后就是你咱们就一块儿呜哇 V， 呜哇 V， 对吧？哎，我刚老师嘛，不好意思嘛。V V。Hello, hello, mana pulau ka? Para Alba, kau kubur pada mana Alba? Bukan langgar nama langgar ini mung Alba. Di mana pun aku kahir, rul rul bajur. Pada bajur mana? Ijan era bawa pada mana? Pada pada anbalang, anjana, ijana.